Chapter 7 I took the back roads where I could, but like death, taxes, and inbred racist white assholes, crossing the paths of other drivers proved inevitable. Every time I passed someone on the road, the whip snap of the pull came with an instant flood of emotions that evaporated as quickly as they manifested. At red lights, where more and more vehicles stacked up around me, the mounting deluge felt like a slow-motion tsunami of feelings in an already overflowing kiddie pool. And it's rarely just happy or sad, which is not to say that even basic emotions aren't problematic. It's a complex spectrum of rapid-fire conflict, hammering incessantly at my useless brain. And the anxiety? Jesus fucking Christ nailed to a crucifix. This world is drowning in anxiety. I kept my eyes locked on the road ahead, desperately focusing all my attention on Valdez and getting to St. Charles General as quickly and safely as possible. Even though I didn't see any of the faces, I still felt everything. Whip snap. Nervous. Heart racing. Sweaty palms. Should have taken the beta blockers. Why the fuck am I this stressed out about getting a raise? All the work I do? I earned it, goddammit. I deserve this fucking raise. And if he doesn't want to acknowledge that... Whip snap. Frustration. Panic. Why hasn't he called yet? What the hell is wrong with him? At least fucking text. Or is that it? Is he fucking ghosting me? After I let him stick his pathetic cock... Shit, now he's calling? Whip snap. Rage. Anger. These assholes need to learn to fucking drive. Go back to your own fucking country, you goddamn oriental... Whip snap. Desperation. Uneasy. Sick. Payday isn't until Friday, and all the money is already spent. Still need to feed the kids dinner, but the overdraft fees... Whip snap. Excited. Lustful. That new phone is the tits. I haven't paid off the old one, but fuck it. Whip snap. Not another fucking commercial. Whip snap. Government just wants to control us. Whip snap. Taking our jobs, taking our money, taking our women. Whip snap. Go to Fun World this weekend. A selfie at the Creamsicle Wall will get a ton of likes. Whip snap. And on and on and on. Jesus fuck. By the time I got to the hospital, I had a hard time catching my breath. I stayed on the outskirts of the parking lot until I located the morgue, and then I backed into a spot at the far end of the lot. With a long, exhausted breath, I slumped over the steering wheel and let my eyes fall shut. The drive had left me emotionally drained and physically worn out. I've had shit drives before, bad episodes full of crippling, unwanted emotions, on and off the road for that matter. During the worst of it, the idea of killing myself was never too distant, anything to escape that endless mental torture. Maybe one day I'll go through with it. It's not like I've got a whole lot to live for anyhow. Until then, there's isolation. And failing that, booze. My head felt like a 16-pound bowling ball had been crammed into my skull, but I managed to lift it, looking at the massive, multi-level hospital campus in front of me. And then I proceeded to curse out Valdez. Again. The tension in my chest throbbed, snagging hard on the hospital. I thought I had parked far enough away, but the amount of emotion... Grief, anger, frustration, horror, sadness, hopelessness, all condensed into one location. It was like the hospital exuded its own emotional, gravitational force. A goddamn pulsing black hole of empathic fucking doom. Those unlucky enough to cross the event horizon would get sucked in and lost forever into the void. Even at my most lucid, I couldn't think of a worse place for someone with super empathy to visit. Fucking Valdez. I grabbed the bottle of whiskey from the passenger seat, cracked the top, and started drinking. If you want to know how to suck down an entire bottle of whiskey in 30 seconds, the first thing you need to learn is how to open your throat. This involves taking a small swallow right when you start chugging. Second, commit to the chug and don't even think about pussing out. If you hesitate or change your mind after you start, that'll only make it worse. Once you're going, it'll burn like shit, so better to get it down as quickly as possible. Third. Find yourself a crippling condition that necessitates such drastic measures. Finally, the three Ps. Practice, practice, practice. It also probably doesn't hurt to have a kind of super level of tolerance. My point, don't try this at home, kids. And if you do, you're a fucking twat and you'll probably wind up in the hospital. The last of the whiskey splashed down my throat and I tossed the bottle into the passenger footwell where it clattered against other empties. As the warmth from the alcohol spread to my extremities, the tightness in my chest loosened. The glowing nuclear reactor of emotional distress that was St. Charles General dimmed gently, easing into a mild case of whiskey-goggled normality. I pushed the door open and climbed out of the truck. 
After a cautious half-turn and confirming that distinct feeling of a shit-ton of whiskey sloshing around inside, I searched around for any of those pesky, useless... feelings. Nothing so far. I put one foot in front of the other, despite how the ground would occasionally twist under my feet like a cheap, off-brand jello. My world seemed to have returned to what passed as normal. With a satisfied grunt, I started across the parking lot. Hang in there, Valdez. I'm on my way.